My name is Rachel Wilson. I'm a first year graduate student in the MA program in art history with a concentration in Egyptian art and archaeology. The focus of my research in Professor Corcoran's graduate seminar in art history is a Shopti in the collection of the Institute of Egyptian Art and Archaeology. The late New Kingdom Shopti, dating to the reign of the Pharaoh Sipta from approximately 1204 to 1198 BCE, is on exhibit in the Egyptian Gallery at the Art Museum of the University of Memphis. When walking into an Egyptian gallery, it is sometimes the smallest figurine who demands your attention. Shawaptis are the servants of the underworld. When someone of wealth died, the Shawaptis would be placed in the tomb and activated by a spell to make them come alive and work in the place of the deceased. These mummiform figures were a paradox, simultaneously depicting both the deceased and his servant. As a servant, he is expected to work for the god of the underworld, Osiris, by cultivating fields and weaving clothing. The 19th Dynasty figure is made of this brilliant white faience, a favorite glass-like material of the Egyptians due to its luminous quality. On this figure, it allows the black painted details to really stand out. His mouth has long disappeared, leaving him forever silent and making his gaze even more powerful with those dark, unbalanced eyes. In turning the figure around, we can see what appears to be a basket or bag held at his back. You can imagine him standing at the ready, waiting in silence to be called to work. On his legs is an inscription. Where we would normally expect the Shabti spell calling Hori to work, instead, the inscription calls out to the illumined Osiris, symbolizing the Shawapti's dual funerary and solar meaning. The Egyptians believed that death involved a transformation, that when the deceased entered the underworld, he would become assimilated with both Osiris and Ra, the sun god, before being resurrected. The inscription also tells us the most important detail, his identity. At the end of the column, it refers to his title as King Son of Kush, marking him as a viceroy. As viceroy, his duties would have been to govern the land south of Egypt and collect taxes of such items as gold and ebony, reporting directly to the pharaoh Siptah. On his feet, faintly remaining, is his name, Hori. <laughs>